My name's Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So, what do I have for you today, my friends? Well, we're going to kick things off with something from Camp Intel, as they have revealed that they're going to be launching Springcrest, the first neural network processor in 2019. Then we're going to move over to something from Samsung, as they have revealed a new roadmap with fabrication all the way down to 3nm. Then we're going to move over to an interesting report from John Petty Research regarding the GPU market and cryptocurrency mining, and then we're going to move over to something very interesting from QNAP. But let's start off with Intel and Springcrest. So basically what happened here is at an AI developer conference, Intel announced the Nirvana NMP L1000, which is the first neural network processor, or NMP, to come out of its acquisition of Nirvana. Now what's interesting here is that the chip is actually going to prioritize memory bandwidth and compute utilization over theoretical peak performance. So what that actually means for a processor like this is it's going to put emphasis not so much on peak trillion operations per second or tops as it does on high memory bandwidth and low latency. Now Intel did actually show some performance numbers for the Springcrest prototype which is by the way just being demoed to certain people but what did they have to say? Well essentially what they said is that they have achieved more than 96.4% compute utilization on a single chip which represents around 38 tops of actual not theoretical performance on a single chip and then with general matrix to matrix multiplication or gem operations that support model parallel training these are realizing nearly li nearly linear scaling and 96.2% scaling efficiency this basically means that multiple nmps can be connected together and quote, frees us from memory constraints of other architectures. Now we also saw 89.4% of unidirectional chip-to-chip -chip efficiency of theoretical bandwidth of less than 790 nanoseconds. And are, quote, excited to apply this to the 2.4 terabits per second of high bandwidth and low latency interconnects. Now some of you, I'm sure some of you are saying rather, Yep, that's, that's some words you just said. Yep, nodding. Mm -hmm. But what does that actually mean in terms of like real world effects? Well, basically, to put it in simpler terms, Intel are promising three to four times the neural network training performance compared to Lakecrest, which of course is its predecessor. So essentially, this is the very first Nirvana product that's going to be shipping to consumers, and we are seeing, again, three to four times the neural network training performance. Now, of course, this isn't something for you or I, but as I've said many times, I do enjoy reading about the very very tippy top because obviously even if it's not meant for consumers it of course could have an impact on our lives in more ways than you might expect so it is so interesting i think to take a look at what's going on there but let's move on to samsung shall we so basically what we have here is at the Samsung Foundry Forum 2018 they have revealed a series of new process technology improvements which of course, as you might expect of a company like Samsung, targets numerous things including connected devices and high performance computing. Now we do actually have quite a bit to get into here, but the first to arrive is going to be, as you might expect, 7NM, or 7NM Low Power Plus, which is based on UEV lithography. And as for when it's actually going to go into production, it's actually going to be the second half of this year and will be scaled up during the first half of 2019. Now as you can see, next up we have 5NM low power early. Now this is, as you might expect, going to take the 7LPP or 7NM low power plus process, innovate upon it and of course be scaled down and improved consumption figures as well. Shockingly, I know this is going to you know, fill you with surprise and, and just... <gasps> My mind has been blown, but after 5NM comes 4NM, I know. And this is 4NM Low Power Early and Low Power Plus, and this is going to be actually the last generation they're going to be making use of FinFET technology. Now, this is a fairly small step between 5 and 4NM, but it is designed to allow for easy conversion while achieving performance improvements. So, the last stop on the roadmap, as I said in the introduction to this video, is 3NM Gate All Round Early Plus. Now this is going to make use of a new type of, or newer type of transistor, should I say, that allows for the scaling issues with FinFET to be solved. And Samsung is calling these devices MBC FETs or multi-bridge channel FETs, and each will use a nano sheet to improve control of the gate. Now obviously this is quite some time away. It's going to be a while before Samsung or anybody really are able to scale process technologies all the way down to 3NM, but 
Issues associated with said scaling are of course being worked on behind the scenes and at the moment at least estimates are putting 3NM fabrication being ready in 2022. So yes it's a few years off but it's not as far off as you might expect. Now I do have a bit of a statement here from Charlie Bay, the Executive Vice President and Head of Foundry Sales and Marketing Team over at Samsung. And she said, quote, the trend towards a smarter connected world has the industry demanding more from silicon providers. To meet that demand, Samsung Foundry is powering innovation at the silicon level that will ultimately give people access to data, analysis and insight in new and previously unthought of ways to make human lives better. It is imperative for us to accomplish the first time silicon success for our customers' next generation chip designs. Over the past year, we have focused on strengthening our UEV, UEUV excuse me, process portfolio to provide each of our customers with the finest technologies. Applying GAA structure to our next generation process node will enable us to take the lead in opening a new smart, connected world while also reinforcing our technology leadership. Now in the description below this video, you can find a link to the source for this particular piece of information. There is a full report from Samsung themselves and there is obviously a few details there that I have kind of skipped over as per usual I've kind of given you the hot take as it were the cliff notes but I have given you of course all the pertinent information but there is a few bits there if you do wish to get some further information I would recommend highly that you look in the description below this video and find a, won a wonderful wonderful link for you to click on but let's move on to our next topic which is regarding John Petty Research's reports. Now these guys probably ring a bell because there was a very interesting report that they did not too long ago on PC gaming as a whole, but this time they have updated their quarterly market watch report and they have found some rather interesting findings. Now for those of you who are perhaps thinking, boy, I'm supposed to know who these guys are, guys are, guys are, English, wow. They are an industry market research firm for the graphics industry and basically what they have found is that the cryptocurrency market is continuing to influence the PC graphics market but its influence is waning. But let's look at actual facts and figures shall we? Their market watch found that year to year total GPU shipments increased 3.4%, desktop graphics increased 14%, notebooks decreased 3% and GPU shipments decreased 10% from the last quarter. In terms of actual companies, however, AMD decreased 6%, Nvidia decreased 10 and Intel decreased 11 However, in terms of market share again, AMD did actually increase it, benefiting from new products for workstations and, of course, cryptocurrency mining. Nvidia held pretty steady, but Intel did decrease. In terms of what cryptocurrency miners actually bought, over 3 million AIBs were sold to miners worth $766 million and an additional 1.7 million were sold in the quarter. Now normally what we do see in the second quarter is a seasonal decline, but given that of course many many people, including myself in all honesty, have been holding off on buying a new graphics card, or memory as well hasn't been an issue as you know, due to the insane cost. Or should I say the insanely increased cost? Because, you know, graphics card aren't, cards aren't exactly cheap. But, you know, when they're three times their value, you're a bit like, uh, no. <laughs> so I've seen numerous people have been holding off, waiting for the graphics cards to come down in price, you know, be something at least approaching MSRP. And, of course, that has finally happened. So we may see the usual decline maybe not be as bad because, well, gamers are like, oh, finally, I can buy a graphics card. The coast is clear, guys. And we see it being slightly kind of buffered I guess somewhat of course that is pure guess assumption speculation whatever you want to call it so we may see the usual reflection but analysts are predicting a decrease for the next quarter but let's finish things up with QNAP now this isn't something for your eye it's just something to kind of drool over from a distance I'm afraid as QNAP systems have released a new enterprise class TS 1677X Ryzen NAS with 12 3.0 inch drive bays for 2.5 and is driven of course as you might expect by Ryzen 1700. As you might expect there are other models available, one has 1700 like I just said, 1600, Ryzen 3 and supports AES NI encryption acceleration and up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Also as well because why not up to three PCIe slots for lots and lots of expansion. Now, this really is for those sort of people, or companies should I say, that are running multiple virtual machines. It's virtualization ready for VMware, Citrix, Microsoft Hyper 5 and Windows Server 2016 environments. 
So just kind of go over those specs again. It's up to 64 gigs of RAM, hot swappable 2.5 or 3.5 SATA 6 GBPS hard drives or SSDs, three PCIe slots, two 10G based TRG45 LAN ports, four gigabit LAN ports, eight USB 3s, two 3.5 dynamic jacks, one times 3.5 line out jack, one built in speaker, infrared receiver, and of course, just throw in a power supply. So how much is this, you might hear you ask? Maybe purely out of some sort of weird curiosity, and to be fair, I did it too. It's available for $2,568, or up to 4109 if you want the Ryzen 7 model with 64 gigabytes of RAM. Of course, there are other models few and far between, but I, I just had to cover this because this thing is insanely cool. Even if it's obviously not really for you or right, it is still really, really cool. And just obviously got a ton of customization available. So with all that said, with the drawing done and dusted, let's 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 close it out this video, shall we? Hope you're all going to have a lovely weekend. Of course, we've got Friday to go yet, but still, all the home stretch, lads. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.